hello everyone, my name's Nick Holdsworth. Um, that's my Twitter handle there, you can follow me. I probably won't tweet you back for the next 10 minutes or so. That would just be awkward. Um, I'm the head of marketing for a company called Vend, and I'll explain a bit more about that shortly. Uh, Steve gave us a good introduction, thank you. So I'm gonna just break this into three sections, basically, give you a bit of an overview about Vend and what we are. Um, I'm gonna talk about why we use social, and then I'm gonna discuss in uh, some specific examples about you know, how we use social in our marketing strategy. So, what is Vend? This always makes me slightly nervous as a marketing manager. Uh, how many people have actually heard of Vend? in this room. Okay, good number. How many people know what we actually do? Slightly less, okay. Many of you using zero? Yeah, a good number, okay. I know audience participation is always a little uncomfortable, so I've only got one more question. How many of you have ever worked in a cafe or a shop at some point? Okay, quite a lot of people. So you've probably all used a point of sale system at some point. What you'll know about most of them is that they're pretty ugly, um, they're expensive, they don't work very well, and sometimes they're just downright dangerous. So we started Vend kind of on the premise that, that business software didn't have to be like that. Business software could be fun to use, um, and people could actually engage with it, and it could give them productive, it could increase their productivity, and it could make them feel about it in a way that previously you wouldn't think about business software. And we were lucky to start at a time when there was quite a few companies doing that already. Uh, Zero has always been a very big influence to us. I'm sure you'll, you'll all know the story of Zero. When we began, we were quite amazed to see that people would actually tweet about how much they love using accounting software, which was quite unusual at the time. Uh, but there were some other influences for us, um, Zendesk, who we use, uh, making help desk software interesting. Um, MailChimp for email marketing and Shopify was making e-commerce really easy. Uh, we're big believers in wearing those influences on our sleeves. Um, you know, we've all got backgrounds as musicians or something else, and we'll take, we draw on our influences and we make our own out of them. Um, so our premise was quite simple, really. We felt the reasons why people open shops and cafes is because they want to quit their day job and do something that it means something to them. You know, it's hard work, but it can also be fun and it can be rewarding. And we didn't feel it was fair that they had to stare at old pieces of shit like this all day when they could look at something like this, which is what Vend is. So we've designed Vend to run on any device, um, in a web browser, on any platform, pretty much in any country in the world. Um, and the simplest way to think about it is point of sale software that runs in a web browser on any device and doesn't suck. We launched about two years ago. Um, now we have thousands of customers um, all over the world, pretty much. And the reason I wanted to kind of give you that background, I suppose, is because it, it means a lot in terms of why we have a, a very clear social strategy for Vent. Why social? I don't have a lot of infographics. If you search the web, you'll find thousands of graphs talking about how big social is. I'm sure everyone in this room understands um, the significance of social media. A billion Facebook users, I think, half a billion Twitter users, nearly 200 million now on LinkedIn. Really, I just want to talk about some points as to why it's kind of important to us. Uh, the first of those is engagement. You know, when we update a website, we make a change, we can measure clicks, we can measure conversions. But when we post a piece of social media, we can actually get a response from real people about what it means to them. And that's very important when you're developing a product quickly and changing a product and improving it. Uh, cost is important. I mean, I think as was raised earlier, it's not free. Some of the tools may be free, but you have to invest time. But when you're a startup, you don't have a lot of money, but you do have a lot of time. So you invest the resources that you have. So for us, it was a no-brainer. Speed of delivery, again, this comes back to, to the kind of engagement, I suppose. With a web product, you can deliver new changes very quickly, and you want to be able to do the same thing with your marketing. If we have an idea, we can, we can film something in the office and have it on YouTube that day and immediately get feedback for that. And that's really important for us. And the last one is our point of difference. You know, We were taking on the incumbents at the time, and we felt that their marketing was boring, we felt their product was boring and expensive, and we wanted to do something different on every channel. And, and social for us was an opportunity to present ourselves as a completely fresh, new and interesting product and an alternative to them. Uh, and we started two years ago, and you know, social media was well established by then, so in a lot of ways I guess it was a no-brainer. I don't, I don't think any company would really start today without a social media presence. I, I certainly wouldn't take them seriously, and I think a lot of people would probably feel the same way. So. How do we actually do social media? 
Well, I guess for us, it, you know, we, we started this company because we wanted to do something that we believed in, we were passionate about. We felt that retail was fun. But most of the B2B marketing at the time was, was dull. And we didn't feel that it had to be. We felt that we could celebrate the reasons why people uh, start these businesses and have a bit of fun with it and connect with people with engaging content. Um, now, the way that one B2B company markets from another B2B company might be different. The way that we market from a B2C company might be different too. It's about kind of discovering what works for you and then building on that, I suppose. So, our marketing strategy effectively is a social strategy. We launched when social media was already well developed. And social media pretty much touches on every aspect of our marketing. Certainly for the first two years, as we've grown in size and we start to explore more channels, we, we start to do more direct approaches and more events. But social still plays a very, very important part of that. And, and I'll just talk about five areas of, of where social media is important to us. Brand building. Like I said, we wanted to celebrate the positive reasons why people start businesses. We wanted to show ourselves as a new product, a new company, um, something different from the old piece of shit that we're using to date. And we found that creating content has helped us with that. Not just marketing videos, we've done some interesting marketing videos which we've posted to YouTube, but also celebrating our customers' success stories. Um, and then we also wanted to show that we're a team of people Especially when you're a company like ours, where you're based in New Zealand, but you have a global product. A lot of the time, people's only interaction with you is through email or through some uh, help tickets. And we wanted to kind of give people a sense that we weren't just two guys in a bedroom um, write, <laughs> writing code. Even when we were just two guys pretty much in a bedroom writing code. And so we want to kind of put a face to our brand and to our product. Uh, and we use a lot of channels for that. We use Pinterest, Instagram. Facebook, obviously, is a very important part of that. Inbound marketing. This is very important when you're a, a software as a service product like Vend. Our customers come to our website, they, they tour the product, they maybe look at some of the examples and some testimonials, and then they take a trial. So our blog is our, our real center point for that. Our blog is our focus of our inbound marketing. We, we create content and which people will share. And they don't always share it, but when they do, we, we learn from that and we create more content as a value to people. Um, we try to include our customers in those stories as much as possible. We want to celebrate their success. Um, and then we seed that content through all of our channels. And we measure which ones get bites and which ones get likes. And then we try to seed that content through wider channels as well, through external bloggers. And um, yeah, we, we, we do actually use sometimes Facebook now to promote content as well, to reach a wider audience. Again, it's telling the story um, about retail, telling the story about our customers, rather than actually selling our product. Now, especially if you're, if you're trying to share your Facebook content with an audience outside of just your fans, but your fans' friends, you want to create content that's actually going to be meaningful to people, rather than just a big story about how great your product is. Other channels that do work really well for us are YouTube. Um, we put everything onto YouTube. We put all of our screencasts, we put our tutorial videos, our product demonstrations. And effectively, it creates this library of content that slowly builds over time and drives leads back to your website. And Quora has worked really well for us too, participating in conversations that are happening on Q&A forums. A lot of people are asking questions about point of sale, and we, we weigh in there. We, we're pretty open about who we are to begin with. Um, but it, over time, it's built a lot of backlinks, and a lot of, a lot of leads have been generated through these forums. Uh, communications. Social is very, very important for us. Our, we have no servers at our office. We all run off of MacBooks um, and an internet connection. We, when we got to about eight people, I suppose, we introduced Yammer. I know Zero use Yammer. Um, they've probably been through the same experience as us. I wanted to have it when there was two people, but it didn't seem to make much sense. What Yammer is, is Facebook for enterprise. It's an internal social media network. Um, and this has been absolutely fantastic for us as we've grown very, very quickly this year in terms of the numbers of people and we've started to have people in remote locations as well. It, it reduces the burden of group emails. It allows people to post a lot more content more frequently and feel like they're part of a team and it allows people to like that content and participate. And so we use it for a lot of things now. Uh, but I think probably the best use is when a new team member joins, they can introduce themselves on Yammer and everybody can say hi. And it's a really great way for people to get to know each other. Um, for external communications, social media is absolutely vital to us. Our help desk runs off of Zendesk. Zendesk allows us to funnel all of our social channels into our support center. 
So we have a completely integrated communications platform for inbound communications. Um, we use forums, public forums, for feature requests for our product. Um, I still regard forums as social media, probably one of the very earliest forms of social media. They get pretty heated. You know, we've got thousands of people in different stores have very different needs. Um, but it gives us a very good barometer of, of what people want out of our product. They can vote on those features. It also allows us to deflect some of the more crazy suggestions. We tell people, look, put it on the forums. If it's really that valuable, people will like it. And sometimes they don't, and they kind of get the idea. So it's a helpful tool in that way. Um, and then we can mark those things as being done or being planned. And it's a really helpful tool. Um, and then likewise with our tweets and our Facebook posts, we'll reply to them from within our marketing team. But if it's an issue, we can create a support ticket from that. That support ticket can go to our product team. And the whole flow is very easy for us to follow. And it means that people are being responded to on whatever channel they reach us effectively. Um, and recruitment. This is a really big one for us. I know this is a big one for, for other companies that are growing quickly as well. Um, we've had to find a lot of really talented people in a short space of time. And, and often for us, the, the traditional channels don't work so well. You know, we can post a job on Seek and we get hundreds and hundreds of applicants and really none of them are right for our company. So we've really invested quite a bit of time in, in brand building as a means to f uh, attract talent. And I think in some ways, our marketing to customers is our first job, marketing to customers and partners, but marketing to potential talent is perhaps our second most important job. And often we use the same channels and the same, the same methods on each. A particular example here is we actually, we found a marketing assistant by taking a photo of a job ad, posting it on Instagram, retweeting it, and putting it on Facebook. It was kind of like an in-joke for <laughs> social media, but it worked. We had people sending us replies that looked like that, people, incredible range of people coming to apply for the job. It's not right for every job, but it does give people a sense of the company that they're applying for. Um, we've actually had people turn up for job interviews in a Spider-Man suit before. So we know that it's working. <laughs> and uh, last of all, reporting. I guess none of this is any good unless you know that it's actually sending traffic to your website or growing your brand. So we uh, report on our social efforts in a lot of ways. Obviously, the native reporting to Facebook and YouTube is very good. Google Analytics has recently introduced some quite good tools for measuring social traffic and assisted conversions as well. So when people come to your website, they go back, they read a tweet, they come back again. What kind of involvement social has had in that? Um, and then we also use kind of group dashboards for that. This is, where, this is where apps are very helpful. It gives you a picture of all of your social channels in one place, what your reach is, how many people are liking your your um, posts, you know, what the kind of growth of your channels are. Um, and we keep an eye on what our competitors are up to. We don't follow them religiously. We don't really pay too much attention to what features they're releasing. We're more interested in what our customers need. Every software company like ours tends to release a lot of vanity metrics about how big they are, how many customers they have, what their growth is. And it's very hard to actually be sure who's doing well in the market. But if we know that we're staying ahead of them in terms of our social media presence, our engagement, our number of followers, to us it gives us a good sense that we're doing a good job. So just some tips. I guess we put social buttons everywhere. Add them religiously. We have them on our homepage. We put them on our landing pages. Um, put them on our tour. Don't be afraid of using them. Make sure that you let people know where you are on those social channels, especially as a business-to-business -business product. So we have links to all of our profiles on our contact page, on the photos of our emails. Apps are your friend. The different apps will work for different situations and for different companies. Some of them are free, some of them cost a lot of money, but they do, they're very valuable. And make sure that you understand and communicate in your own voice. Um, especially as a business product for us, we, we felt we were familiar with seeing the companies with the kind of stock image photos of the guy in the suit and tie with the, the briefcase. And, and our customers are small businesses, you know, quitting the day job to do something they love. And we felt that we wanted to talk to them in a voice that was familiar to them and, and, and in an honest voice. So we, we communicate very clearly in our voice across all those channels. And there's one point I just wrote down, which I didn't add there, which is trying to involve your team in social. Um, when we filmed that recruitment video, the first day our new support manager turned up, I put him in a cactus suit and he was in a video. And it really, yeah, people love that. They love to get involved. And I think, I think if, you can, if you're struggling to find people to contribute to your social channels, just look from within your team because you can create great content from different parts of your team and people will respond to that. Lastly, 
Social is fun, so we try to have some. And I've got a quick video that sort of touches on some of those points. This is basically a kind of montage show of some of the clips that we've posted to YouTube over the last couple of years. And that's me. Thank you very much.